guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. I hope this video finds you doing well. Today, as we try to do every single season, we brought on the number one player from Ladder from last season. It is Pedro, aka on the Clayton account at 6,773 trophies. Man, he got high, guys, and he did it using mostly this deck. Two versions of Golem deck. We'll look at both versions in today's video, but this was his go-to. This is the version that he used down the home stretch, notably using arrows in this deck, and there's no princes, no double prince. Instead, we have Night Witch and we have Lumberjack. So in today's video, it's going to be very straightforward. This video is intended for people who want to become a better player when it comes to heavy beatdown Golem decks. So we're going to watch his nuances his mannerisms, his decision making throughout these matches, and just do kind of a strict play-by-play. -play. We're going to watch all six of these replays. Uh, this match is going to be a, a pretty easy matchup, a, an expo match. Everything else, for the most part, is going to be a hard counter. We're going to see how to beat P.E.K.K.A. decks, how to beat Hog decks. There's going to be plenty of annoying and kind of challenging, more than annoying, decks to deal with as a Golem player. I do have faith that all of you who want to get better at playing Golem decks will walk away at the into this episode definitely a better golem player that's the goal with every episode here on cwa so you can see right off the bat here he takes a lot of damage on his right tower you can see how lightly he tends to defend obviously the number one thing that you have to get used to when you are a golem player or when you're transitioning into a golem deck is how to get comfortable being uh, okay with the idea of taking damage onto your tower it's something that you're going to notice throughout these replays here by clayton so he goes ahead and he drops that baby dragon. Another thing that you're going to notice right off the bat here, guys, is that Clayton is not afraid to support his pushes, even in single elixir time. He's, you know, he, he stays aggressive. Oftentimes, golem players tend to not fully follow through with their golem push, and when they could have taken a tower, instead they choose to kind of maybe save up more elixir for a pump. In this situation, you can see he supported with the baby dragon, he supported with the tornado, he eventually gets that left tower down down and then we're, we're still able to pump here we don't have the elixir lead here but we do go ahead and pump at the same time that he drops that expo so we're pretty much definitely going to lose our right tower here the important thing is is protecting our pump we can't let his mega minion or any of his troops get to our elixir pump and take any elixir away from us it's really important we can lose a tower in this deck not a big deal really important that we don't lose our pump advantage unless they have direct damage spells that's totally fine in most cases when they fire a ball when they rocket your pump you're going to follow through with a golem as your next card play uh, so here it goes golem in the right lane here for clayton it's going to be time to mount a big push now notice what he does here he goes opposite lane with the night witch knowing that he has rocket don't want to lose all our cards to one rocket here so we go night witch we go mega minion at the very very top of the pocket there, away from the tower, but can help support without clumping everything together for the rocket. Doesn't really matter. Our Lumberjack remains untouched there, but he was able to, our Octate was able to NATO and rocket everything up. We decide to pump up with only 20 seconds left in the match. Another interesting decision here by Clayton. It's not something that I would have thought to do. I probably would have just reloaded with another Golem. But however, he's totally cool with taking damage onto that uh, left tower. And now look at us the opponent has a tough decision to make do they ro or obviously they've already made the decision but do they rocket that pump when we first played it or do they save the rocket for the supporting troops now letting a golem player build a pump advantage when you have the direct spell can be very very uh, challenging and we'll see how it works out here for Clayton so there it is there's the NATO and the rocket Clayton was just wor waiting for it and then he's ready with the golem in the pocket now we don't have to worry about that rocket anymore we can support this push pretty much at will so there's the golem there's the night witch there's the baby dragon we're gonna probably drop a lumberjack in the pocket here indeed we do he's gonna clean up those skeletons gonna be uh momentarily stymied by that ice golem however he's eventually well he's actually not gonna make it to the tower but the night witch and the golemites baby dragon do get the job done there so a nice win that was actually the win that gave clayton number one in the world last season season. Let's go ahead and watch. Uh, oh, this is a replay against the boss Kuwait, and he finished number two in the season using this deck. Now, this deck 
is a hard counter to our deck. It has the Tombstone, uh, of course, Hog Rider already a challenging matchup for Golem players. We're going to see how he handles this. He also has Rocket as well. So look at this. Starting out this match here, we're going to go ahead and NATO this Hog to our tower. You don't see that too often, but he actually doesn't get a swing on, on the tower, I don't think. Maybe he got one swing. I stand corrected there on the tower and one swing on the Elixir Pump, at least to my old man eyes. I might have missed something there, but either way, interesting decision to NATO that hog off of the pump protect that pump get him onto the tower so here we go it's going to be our first golem drop of the match here and uh the boss kuwait's going to go ahead and respond with a tombstone on his end and then he's going to push with the hog rider so we have some skeletons we have a hog rider <clears throat> we have ice golem now let's talk a little bit about the lumberjack here not only is he going to be used for his offensive prowess dropping that rage spell you know raging up all our troops but also he's going to be clayton's go-to defender against any ground troops. Even a goblin gang against bait decks in future matchups, you're going to see that Clayton leans very heavily on his lumberjack in this deck defensively. If you're not sure what, what to play against that hog rider, against that, again, goblin gang, against whatever, that bandit, that, that dark prince, you're, you're usually going to be using, or at least Clayton's usually going to be going ahead and using his lumberjack. And again, what we talked about on that first match, right there on your screen, guys, he kept supporting that push. If he hadn't dropped that mega minion to eat up that rage from the lumberjack he wouldn't have taken that right tower it would just be two golemites kind of you know hammering away at the tower not doing a lot of damage instead we take that tower and that's the difference between a really great golem player and someone who's just a novice yours truly uh so not really i actually think that i'm a pretty a decent golem player however you know i can't even get over 6,000 trophies let alone 6,773 was it trophies uh from clayton but hopefully after this video Video, I'll actually be able to pick up some of these tips and apply them to my game as well. I, I feel pretty good about it. I really am happy. I haven't even recorded the video yet, but I watched all the replays. And I'm like, yeah, this is going to be a good one to anybody who wants to get better with Golem. So here we go. It's a Golem and Baby Dragon and Mega Minion. We have to be careful because we do, do know they have Tornado. So we dropped that Night Witch way in the back. It must have been an interesting decision there for the opponent to use that rocket, get a little bit of damage to that left tower against the Night Witch. But there's no way he would have been, been able, excuse me, to defend against this golem. Meanwhile, he's going to lose that right tower to the to the hog and ice golem. Six elix elixir from the boss devoted to that other side. That's going to leave him with nowhere near enough elixir to defend against this golem push. Uh, Clayton's going to go ahead and support that golem with the night witch in the pocket. Doesn't even really need the night witch, I guess. The golemites will end up finishing off that tower. And there he goes. He, he beats the hard uh, counter there in that matchup. That was the second to last match of this season there for Clayton. He's got to be feeling pretty good about life at this point in real time. Let's go ahead and watch him against AY is God. Shout out to AY for watching, the CEO of Nova Esports, my home clan, or my home clan actually is Nova EG, as you guys know. Uh, undefeated in clan warts. What's up, fam? What's up, fam? I hope the other Nova EG clans are doing well as, as well. There's a lot of them. If you guys want to go ahead and join a Nova clan, I'll include a screenshot on the screen for you guys of all the clans that we have in the clan fam, in the Nova EG, EG clan fam at least. So here we go. It's going to be AY is God. So AY is God, I, I believe is Samuel. Uh, might be, I might stand corrected. That's like a, a couple weeks old, but I think it's still Samuel on the account. He's playing the Hog Lumberjack deck, and this can be another annoying matchup for a golem player. We're going to see again how Clayton deals with it. So he goes ahead and he pumps in the back there. And again, don't know what to play. Well, play the Lumberjack here. We're going to take a lot of damage. And the opponent's going to go ahead and take care of, uh, by, by take care, I mean destroy or, or at least mitigate the power of our Elixir Pump there with that Fireball. However, we're able to answer with that NATO Activate our King Tower that's going to help us out in the rest of the match. Normally, a Hog deck would have a big advantage over a Golem deck. However, in this matchup, we at least stand a fighting chance because we have Tornado. Just one of the many reasons that Tornado fits really well into this deck. If you're not a big Tornado user or you're not a fan of it after the nerf, we're going to share a version, I think the next matchup, with Poison and Bandit instead of Inferno, excuse me, 
instead of a tornado in Baby Dragon. So here we go. It's going to be a big push for us. Now watch the timing on this zap here, guys. Beautiful timing. He always waits to the last, the very last moment before that Inferno Dragon really starts to tear into the golem. It's going to allow that golem to get to that tower, get a little bit more damage. And here we go. It's a Baby Dragon and a Night Witch uh, eating up a little bit of rage, but the opponent has a really nice zap there. He's still going to have to answer this Baby Dragon. Meanwhile, we're just going to go ahead and pump up in the back. Going to force a fireball out of the opponent. We have a pretty good elixir advantage now. Just about two elixir, but that can that can go a long way in a golem matchup. So here's the golem in the back for Clayton. Let's see how he kind of executes what could be his last push of the game. Now, going against the Inferno Dragon here, I should have pointed out earlier, makes this matchup almost even more difficult than the first matchup. Although there's no tombstone to deal with, still the Baby Dragon can be a nuisance, uh, you know, against a golem deck. So here we go. It's going to be a fireball on our support troops. Even with that fireball, though, we're going to keep supporting this push. Another Mega Minion at the bridge. Here's the Baby Dragon. A beautiful uh, job at eating up all of this rage spell. We get another, you know, few hundred damage off that tower, taking it down to 1623. We're going to reload again with the Night Witch in the back. Drop that golem smack dab in front of our left tower. At this point, kind of forcing Samuel or AY in kind of a, a tricky situation here. They can't really push with the hog. They don't want to go opposite lane. It's too late for that. So they're forced to just continue to try to defend here. But you can see in double elixir time, it's going to get more and more difficult to defend. Eventually, we are going to break through. We are going to get to that tower. Look at the, the bats there, the mega minion, the baby dragon, all eating up that rage. We finish off that left tower, come away with a victory. Let's watch this next matchup here against... Oh, Abdallah Bohammed. Let's watch this one first, guys. Again, there's going to be plenty of replays to share in this video. Uh, oh, this is the replay I was thinking of. Okay, this is where we switch to the poison version of the deck. So we take out Baby Dragon, we add in poison. We take out Tornado because we took out the Baby Dragon, and we add in the Bandit. So a little bit more of a, uh, a punishing threat at the bridge spam element of the Baby Dragon. Uh, gives us another kind of ground body to use in tandem with the Lumberjack. And uh, let's see how we handle this. So this is going to start out really not too well for Clayton here. By the way, huge shout out to Abdallah Bohamed. I believe, again, could be wrong here, but I believe this is Durga. Uh, pushing the Abdallah account in. He's going to do a really, really good job with this deck. He loves this deck. I shared it a few days ago. The the new best meta bait deck, if you guys are looking for a more in-depth deck guide of uh, Durga's deck here. And uh, let's see how we... So we take a lot of damage. Excuse me, guys. kind of lost my train of thought there. We take a lot of damage to that left tower, uh, but we're okay. We're going to go ahead and pump up here. We're going to force a fireball out of the opponent, and then we're going to get ready with that big golem push. We're going to try to take down this left tower here. Here. Again, you're, you're, you're going to see here in these replays, Clayton definitely not afraid to play the Golem in the first two minutes. It, it's, it's a long time ago where Golem players felt like they couldn't play Golem until double elixir time. Definitely don't have that mentality anymore. So here it comes a Miner and a Goblin Gang. That's six elixir. We're going to respond with only four elixir and the Lumberjack. That gives us a little bit more elixir advantage to kind of push here into the left lane. So the opponent does have the Inferno Tower. That's not going to be a big deal. We're going to get that bandit charge we're gonna use that zap and look at this guys the golem death damage is gonna take all those minions out from the minion horde meanwhile the omega minion is going to be able to finish off that left tower uh, or at least the golemites are so look at that guys we went against a, a, a minion horde and an Inferno Tower still able to take down that left tower, pushing through all those annoying hard counters defensively. So now we're going into double elixir time. This game is far from over. You can see in this situation, knowing that the opponent had a lot of good offensive cards in hand, we opted not to go for the Golem. Instead, we're going to cycle that Night Witch in the back. We play the Golem at the bridge. That's going to allow us time to kind of eat through everything here. Look at even that Minion Horde, guys. That Minion Horde was right there. They're right on top, seemingly, of the Night Witch. Not going to do one iota of damage to the Night Witch. Meanwhile, the Mega Minion, the Bats, and everything survives. We take down the right tower. Clayton says, wow, wow, wow. He can't believe it. He beat a matchup that, that could be very challenging. And he came through with fl uh, flying colors here in this match. Now all we have to do is defend a little bit. Ten seconds left. That's going to be all she wrote there. Clayton coming away with another victory using this Golem deck. So... 
hopefully guys, you know, we're about, I don't know, halfway through the video, a little bit further than that. Hopefully you're already kind of picking up on the mannerisms of decision making that Clayton makes in these matchups. Uh, let's watch the one, okay, bridge spam, we're gonna watch that. Uh, we'll end off with a bridge spam. I do want to show you guys this P.E.K.K.A. one as well. So let's watch this P.E.K.K.A. replay here. How to deal with a P.E.K.K.A. when the opponent also has Mortar. So the reason Mortar is actually sneaky good against Golem decks is not only can you pull the Golem with a defensive Mortar, but you can also kill the support troops because the Mortar's going to shoot right over that big lumbering Golem. So early on here, a little bit of chip damage uh, onto our left tower. We were able to pump up. That's the good thing about this deck that we're facing is there's not an immediate... He has Miner. He has Miner Log, Miner, and a Zap, but there's no big spell that we have to worry about, unlike the previous, what, Four or five matchups that we've covered today. By the way, we have switched to the earlier version of the deck again with arrows, baby dragon, and NATO instead again of the poison and bandit. So here we go. It's our first golem push. We were able to protect that pump for the most part. I think it took one uh, shot from the mortar there, but we're still going to get value out of it. That's the most important thing. Here comes the night witch behind this golem. We're pushing into the P.E.K.K.A. So how do you handle a push as a golem player when you're pushing into to a P.E.K.K.A. Well, the arrows are going to help out in a big way there, and we're going to support this push as well. So we have a, uh, look at this, we have Mega Minion, we have Baby Dragon, we have Night Witch, all coming behind that Golem. When the Golem dies, we're going to NATO that Goblin Gang all together in front of the tower. That's going to provide a clear lane for our support cards to finish off that tower. Again, the same theme that we're seeing throughout this video, guys, that we're not afraid to follow through with our pushes. We kept dropping the Mega minion we kept dropping the baby dragon even after we saw the pekka coming down intercepting our night witch and our golem so again all we're gonna have to do here with over a minute left in the match we actually i think we have the advantage going into double elixir even against a pekka deck just because they have pekka doesn't mean the match is over Guys, don't kind of panic when you see, oh no, they have P.E.K.K.A., forget it, hard countered, I'm done. Using the Tornado, you can pull the P.E.K.K.A. into your supporting troops. We didn't see that in this matchup, but it's another move you can kind of do if you're having problems breaking through that P.E.K.K.A. early on. However, it's going to result in a three crown here. Golem finishing off the King Tower there for Clayton. So guys, again... You're seeing kind of how aggressive that Clayton is. I would say that for a golem beatdown player, he's probably a little bit more on the aggressive side, and he's totally, totally comfortable with taking damage to his towers. The big two kind of reoccurring themes throughout this video. Let's go into this last replay here against Icarus. Shout out to Icarus playing Bridge Spam. Now, he's playing the version of Bridge Spam. Well, pretty much every Bridge Spam has Inferno Dragon. Let's be real. Even the original Vietnam deck had Inferno Dragon in it. We're going to go ahead and see how he deals with it another kind of challenging matchup because right when you drop the golem when your opponent's playing bridge spam they're liable to kind of just push the other lane really really hard oftentimes you won't have enough elixir to defend against it you know look at this situation right here that battle ram we're not going to even defend against it at all we're going to let that battle ram take almost take out our left tower here meanwhile we're going to devote a little bit more elixir trying to push the right lane didn't really work out for us here but these are the, the tough decisions that you have to make throughout these matches so how are we going to come back from this early deficit against this challenging deck well i can tell you one thing did you guys see that coming he dropped the late lumberjack he followed through with his push he identified that the opponent didn't have enough elixir to defend after they dropped that bandit we're able to take that right tower and all of a sudden this game is back into any Anybody's, anybody's hands anybody can win it here so going back to the the start here the thing that you have to be very careful about is when you drop your golem and the opponent just puts too much pressure on you you have to devote a little bit of elixir to defending and then you don't have anything to answer the inferno dragon in the golem lane so that's the biggest thing you have to watch out for for this uh, matchup and there we're able to defend with the baby dragon and the tornado against that battle ram and dark prince however our king tower does take a significant amount of damage down to 1692 so let's see how we handle this guys where are we going to drop the golem are we even going to we are so golem in back of the tower we got to be ready so the icarus is going to go kind of 
not all out here in the right lane, but he, he definitely spends eight elixir, right? A bandit, uh, my math is right there, right? Yeah, I think. Uh, three, six, nine elixir. Okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. Actually, it wasn't. It was eight elixir. Holy crap, Ash. Math skills. Hashtag. All right. So a lot going on here. Forgive me. I'm not really that <laughs> dumb, I swear. Uh, so we're going to zap to retarget that Inferno Dragon or reset, excuse me, that Inferno Dragon. We're going to pull everything together here. And again, we're going to, uh, you can see, we're still going to get this Baby Dragon, I think, on this tower, guys. We do. Baby Dragon is locked onto that tower, forcing the zap out of Icarus there to get that Baby Dragon off the tower. Uh, Battle Ram, unfortunately, totally wasted here. The Lumberjack's going to take care of that Battle Ram. He's also going to take care of the Ice Golem. And here we go. We have the Golem in the pocket here. That's going to pull that Dark Prince into the lane. Lumberjack's already on the tower. It doesn't even matter, guys. That's going to be victory here for Clayton. Again, against a very challenging matchup. You can see defensively, we're able to cycle to a Lumberjack, prevent that Bandit from charging onto our right Princess Tower. Meanwhile, we're going to cash in for another three crown victory man a lot of these victories have indeed been three crowns out of clayton guys check out clayton's player profile if you want to see his live matches his battle log everything's there in the links below on statsreal.com as well as deck links to both of the ver versions i should say of the golem decks that you saw in today's video guys thank you so much for watching An another huge shout out to pedro for coming on the channel great player i hope you guys learned a lot from today's video i certainly did so huge shout out to brent chong my youtube partner Check out his information in the description below. Guys, thanks so much for watching, and as always, take care, guys.